Good evening, Arctic Ace viewers. It's been an eventful week. Monday night, after trading out Budfly for new player to the Arctic Ace squad, Anti, Arctic Ace was finally able to secure its first victory in Season 43 of BSEA's Advanced League. Tonight, they'll be going up against Numa, who have had similar luck in the league thus far, with four losses and one victory also occurring in their previous match. With that in mind, these teams should be pretty equal here, and it could be anybody's match. I have no idea who the victory will go to, and I am excited to get into it. How is everybody in the chat doing tonight? Hopefully the mic today is actually pointed at my mouth, unlike last time where it was pointed at the ceiling. Nerdski, how are you doing? Turkey, turkey, gobble, gobble. You, uh... You're smoking that tartar sauce pack, and honestly, I respect you for it. Very good stuff. But yeah, Team Numa. Arctic Ace has previously won against this team, I believe in uh, season 42, but I'm pretty sure it was a, a fairly close match here. I actually do have my stats on hand, so I don't know why I'm guessing, but I can just go look at them. One moment, please. Uh, it's too much of a hassle to go looking for it. But it looks like the teams are all set up here. And for some reason, this, uh, this is not switching over on its own. So we'll just, we'll force it to switch over because I do believe the match will soon be going alive. I mean, the knife round hasn't begun yet, but uh, it looks like most of the players are here. Mick, Bricks, Anzi, Cyandor from the Arctic Ace side of things, and oh my goodness, that is loud. I'm just gonna turn that down a little bit here. Those AK-47 shots really don't play around. They are loud as hell. All right, lost my train of thought. Bricks, Mick, Anti, Cyandor are here. We're missing cool comms. Meanwhile, on the Numa side of things, we have Secret Agent, Gonak, Valens, MJ, and Delete. Tempo is sitting here, but that is the coach for the Arctic Ace team. That is not one of the players, so I believe we are just waiting on cool comms. But yeah, I'm excited. Arctic Ace has secured their first victory. It's, uh... It's, uh... Definitely a deserved victory. I mean, a 6-16 six to 16 victory is not something to scoff at. As we just observe Numa MJ's body here in alt mid. Look at that thing. I hope somebody told Coolcoms he was supposed to show up to this match, because, uh, at the moment... No, I see him there in the Discord. He's in the correct channel. But yeah, how's everybody doing as we wait for the teams to be ready? I see there's a few more people here if anyone wants to interact. Let's actually get auto director going on here so we can we can take a look at what these players are doing during their warm-up. So here we have Anti just farming people in T side spawn, bricks, getting a, a little deagle there while middle in the middle of inspecting their weapon, their deagle. And there it is, cool comms is in, the knife fight is beginning. All of the 
players will meet up face to face in mid and uh, determine who will be starting on which side, T or CT. A very nice jumping knife there from, I believe it was Gonak. And now it's a 3v1 in the knife fight. MJ running for their life. And they are able to take out Mick. 3 HP and Dream, but Anti is able to clutch it up. And that is the knife fight going to Arctic Ace. They are going to decide which side they start on. And then the match will begin, and I am excited for it. The match is live. Round one, Arctic Ace versus Numa. Match taking place on Inferno. I was playing Inferno earlier today, actually, and I, uh, I hate the chickens. They, for some reason, I always aim towards them and shoot at them. All right, let's see here what Enuma is going to do. T-sided plays, follow the T-side. Where are they going to be putting their aggression? It looks like the majority of the players are going up mid with Delete. Staying in alt mid here, watching apps for the window. And MJ, they're going to be able to get the pick onto Cyandor and Banana. And, I mean, Coolcoms might get Secret Agent right there, and he does. He is able to land the headshot. The trades are coming out. Delete is deleted by Mick. Gonak and MJ pistol round. They're gonna try and push this banana, but Bricks, I mean, if they don't check sandbags here, they do check it. Gonak is able to take Bricks out. Anti 6 HP. Falling back onto site, and a quick rotation is coming in from the rest of the Arctic Ace players, but the bomb is going over towards A. Look at this. Valens. Sneaky beaky like. Cheeky breaky. He is able to get the bomb plant down on B, uh, on A site, sorry. And that is going to put Arctic Ace on a time limit. They're going to have to get over towards the A site, get that bomb defused, and if they aren't able to figure out where Valens is hiding, I mean, it's going to be bad news bears for them, but it looks like someone is coming up. Oh no, nobody goes to check the apartments, and Valens is going to be able to just peek out and get the drop on them from Boiler. Oh, never mind. Mick is watching it now. That is not Coolcoms down. I 100% predicted Coolcoms would be taken out there, and it was going to be a round one by Numa just by the bomb going off. But it is a first round victory for Arctic Ace here. And that is going to afford them some weapons, at least Coolcoms and Mick. I believe they were the star players here. They got the. Yeah, they both got two kills each. Anti with one. Isn't this team good, says Nano. <laughs> Numa? Yeah, Numa's pretty good. Gonak goes down. Cyandor able to take him out. I believe that happened in the middle of alternate mid, like, that cross section. I really underneath balcony i need to learn my callouts delete is able to trade up cyandor mick he was also taken out and it looks like bricks and uh anti are gonna push through the smoke but they weren't aware that balens was sitting right outside of it and it is now a 1v4 situation cool comms is quickly deleted by delete and that's gonna be a 1-1 one -one. numa equalizing it budfly saying no what's going on budfly This team has Valence. It also has, uh, I believe, Cobra as a coach. Budfly is 100% welcome to join in and co-cast if you'd like to, but there is definitely no pressure there. Let's see where it's going, though. MJ pushing up Banana here. They're going to put that firebomb down, prevent any aggressive pushes onto uh, top of Banana, but... I mean, there's not going to be any aggressive pushes onto top of Banana. I mean, the Numa players are just playing very spread out at the moment. They are putting the Execute down as if they are going towards B, though. But it looks like the bomb is actually slowly rotating towards A. Nope, they've decided B might be the play. No, he's just going to go back into T-spawn. What am I talking about? 
I guess I don't know anything about this game. Yeah, there we go. Towards A, as like I first said. Team has regrouped. We're going to take a look at the first point of contact here. It's going to be Mick on A site. And I mean, the push comes out. He knows it's happened. And he saw one drop pit. He knows they're there. That's one down. Mick's able to secure one kill. And we're just going to put it back onto Auto Director here and see where it takes us. Anthe was able to secure another kill. It is 3v4, but uh, cool comms. I mean, he's all the way back in mid. He's going to have to make something happen here. Cyandor is deleted. Gonak able to take out Anti. It is down to a 2v2 secret agent. Securing the kill onto Mick. And that's going to put Coolcoms in a very uncomfortable situation on Balkan here. Especially when he's not facing the correct direction. Very unfortunate. And a very good play by Numa. We love to see it. Like I said, for those of you just joining, Arctic Ace is coming into this match fresh off of their first victory during Season 43, but Numa is in the same boat with four losses, one win, Arctic Ace as well. And these teams should be just about even if the scoreline is anything to be trusted, I guess. And look at this. Look at this. What's going on over here? I want to see this. Yeah, a very nice pistol stack here in B. And Budfly is enjoying his snacks tonight. That's okay, Budfly. We love to see a man enjoy his snacks. But what we don't love to see is an entire team getting mowed down in Banana. It's Arctic Ace. And I mean, cool comms. 14 HP. A dream. And the dream is gone. And Budfly saying spoilers. Arctic Ace won this game 16 to 6 GG. If we're going to see a repeat of, uh, yes, of uh, Monday night, then... I will be satisfied. Satisfied in more ways than one. But here we go. Round five, it looks like it's going to be the first actual round with full buys here with uh, Arctic Ace having four M4A1Ss, cool comms with an AWP, Secret Agent having a Galil MJ with an M4A1S as well, and Delete, Gonak, and Valens playing with the AK-47s, and it looks like the push is coming heavy A-side through boiler and into lane. A nice little boost attempt here from Gonak, but uh, it's going to cost him a little bit of HP. He is able to deliver the damage back onto Cyandor, though, and push Cyandor into pit. That's not a great place to be. He is able to spot Gonak and take him out. Cyandor with the lightning fast reflexes here. The person that was boosted watching pit didn't even see him before. The pick came out. Delete is able to trade it up, though. 4v4 situation. Coolcom's missing an op shot. Not what you love to see coming out of Coolcom's here. And it looks like it's already happened, though. The bomb has rotated over towards B. Valens pushing out onto site, but Anti was lurking. And pops a smoke. That's some dangerous crossfire angles there, Scrub Bricks. Very dangerous crossfire angles, but he luckily does not manage to land a shot on his teammate. Instead, taking out an enemy player. Anti able to take out MJ. I'm not sure how he spotted him. It might have been a collision box sort of thing. Ran into him. Smacked him dead in the face with the barrel of his rifle. But uh, that is going to be Arctic Ace with two rounds. Numa at three. We love to see a close game here. All right, let's see how it goes here. Bombs drop down in a default position on the scooter back towards T spawn. And everyone on Numa has split up. Looks like they're going to be playing for some picks here. Gonak was able to get up into apartments, but dropped back out off of Balcony. Now the question is, they are going to be doing the execute towards B, and I'm not sure how Bricks predicted that, but it was a very nice frag grenade, a very nice amount of damage put onto Gonak and Valens here for the Numa side of things. 
Lots of grenades flying everywhere. The execute has happened. Brix is going to be the first one to engage, and there it is. He's able to take one out. He is able to get a second one. Not able to get the third, though. MJ trades it up, and it is 3v4 in a post-plant situation here. Anti playing in the back by Coffins. Mick in construction. Cyandor in CT. Cool comes is there with, in CT with him, and it looks like they're going to be pushing construction out onto site through Coffin. The shots come through. Valens and Secret Agent both able to get a kill. Cool comms goes down, and that's an AWP out of the hands of Arctic Ace and into the hands of Numa. And Cyandor might actually just try and stick this here. Let's see. He is not able to do it. I think that was pretty close, though. It was definitely a risky play that did not pay off for Cyandor, but... Without the time remaining to defuse that bomb, it was the only play that he could do. That's going to bring Numa up to four rounds one. They are at a two-round lead. And it's going to force Arctic Ace here into a half-buy situation where they are just buying Desert Eagles and Bricks is staying with his USPS. Lots of utility flying here, and a lot of the uh, Nuba players actually going towards A, but that's exactly where Arctic Ace is. Cool comes is going to be the first one to engage, and a lot of shots are fired. Two of the Numa players do go down, but they are still at a one-player advantage here. Briggs taking a shoot, a few shots with his USP. It looks like a flank from Anti actually on mid. Valens! My goodness, the reaction time. In the middle of retreating from Anthe's assault, he flips around and manages to take out Cyandor. And that's going to be Numa securing another round. Once again, though, Arctic Ace affording full buys here. Numa is not looking too bad for cash though. I mean, MJ is down at 400, but everyone else isn't doing too terrible. Well, never mind. Arctic Ace though, they are in financial ruin at the moment. If they lose this one, they are going to have to pull save. This is going to be an important round for them to win, especially where they spent the money to get the full buys. And I mean, right off the bat, Coolcom's getting one, Anti getting two more, and it's down to two players remaining on the Numa side. A flashbang comes out from Bricks, and that manages to blind Valen, securing Anti the pick. Mick finishing off Secret Agent, securing Arctic Ace one more round. We love to see it. Score lines aren't looking too bad here either. All of the players are pretty well even with each other. I mean, yeah, they're pretty well even. MJ, though, with eight assists, that's uh, that's nice to see. Tech nines, though, coming out from the Numa side of things. Let's see what they're going to be able to do with these. Uh, oh, cool comms. Cheeky, breaky, nice little off shot on mid. But I mean, at this point, it should be no contest for the... Arctic Ace squad to wipe the floor with Numa here in this round. I mean, they are in a save. But I've said that before and been proven wrong, so let's see how it goes. Secret Agent with the three-man clutch. Here it comes. Anti able to secure the round, and that's going to bring Arctic Ace one round away from equalizing the score line. But here's the thing, Numa is able to afford all of their weapons once again. That save paid off in the long run. Round 10, everybody, let's go. Round 10 on Inferno, Arctic Ace versus Numa in ESE 8 Season 43, Advanced League. Lots of utility coming out. 
Nice frag damage on to delete. That came from Cyandor. And it looks like Numa is getting ready to commit here for a full A push. They are stacked up in apps, one of them playing out in mid. I mean, he's still lurking back towards Banana. So he might be waiting for any rotation to happen, but it's not going to happen. The Arctic Ace squad just sort of... They're playing this very patiently. There it is, a pick from Mick. It's Valens. Three of the Numa players stacked up, and here's the flash from Secret Agent. That's going to be the cue to push. Delete, able to take out Sandor with assistance from Secret Agent, and there it is. Oh my goodness, just like that, the tides have turned. Arctic Ace, two players remaining. Gonak at 41 HP, though, on the Numa side of things. He might be an easy pick if they're able to spot him in time, but look at this, look at this angle he's playing. Right on top of the box on site, and there it is, MJ able to take Anti out with the AWB, and he gets two of them. And that's pretty, uh, what a, what a, what a stat to project here. Mick had 56% accuracy, while the rest of Arctic Ace had 16%. Gotta love those Counter-Strike stats that, uh, call out, call out the rest of the team. Numa securing their sixth round one, though. And we love to see it. They're back at the two-round lead, just staying a little bit ahead of Arctic Ace here so far. There's Secret Agent doing the spam through the wall again. Bricks goes down on... Ah, from a grenade, even. From a grenade, no less. You hate to see it. Coolcom's got the drop on Gonak, but he wasn't able to secure the pick, and that's very unfortunate. He wasn't even looking in your direction. You hate to see it. Unless you are a Numa fan, in which, in that case, you love to see it. Secret Agent able to take out Cyandor, getting a little aggressive on that push down Apartments. And, I mean, yeah, not much Anti could do there. Playing with the Desert Eagle, peeking a long angle on Banana. Mick is going to try and get the push here, and he is able to secure an up. No way, Mick. Calm yourself. That has got to be clipped. Mick, what are you doing? I mean, Secret Agent is able to uh, finish him off, but there we go. A match pause happens. Mick, unbelievable. Three kills on a save with his, uh, I believe he, I believe Mick always uses a 5-7, but uh, I could be wrong. It did look like a 5-7, but I, I don't, I don't have that good of memory. <laughs> well, while the match is paused, I'll take this moment to ask how everyone is doing in the chat. How are you all doing? Gives us a good little moment to interact here. If there are any issues with the stream, please mention them right away. I don't want to have another situation where my mic is pointed at the ceiling. Especially because I don't have a co-caster today. But there we go, the match is live once again. <laughs> what up says they have their life savings on this game. I cannot condone, condone your gambling, but I am curious. Who do you believe is going to win? What up? Oh, Anti with a nice, nice little headshot onto MJ in Banana. If he sprays this right now, he's going to get Gonak, and he does. Three players remaining on the Numa side. What up saying they... <laughs> Let's frickin' go indeed, what up. I mean, there we go, Bricks. Able to secure a through the smoke headshot onto Secret Agent, and it's... I mean... Every time Numa gets a pick, it's just traded out by another Arctic Ace player. And by every time, I mean the one pick they got. I mean, I believe Ansi secured the majority of the picks that round with a cute little 2k, maybe even a 3k on Banana. Bricks gang, though. Good to see the entirety of the Bricks gang here to support Bricks. He do be scrubbing Bricks, though. All right, Arctic Ace at five rounds. Numa still at a two-round advantage here. Let's see if Arctic Ace is able to secure this one. I mean, Numa once again on a save, and that's a very quick pick from Mick very early on in the round. That's huge, even bigger. Cool comms, getting that off shot.
Little molly down banana from Secret Agent, but he gets picked off as he tries to cross into banana. And the final player remaining is Valens on the Numa side. 13 HP, a dream to secure a rifle and potentially save it. Oh, he already has secured an M4A1S. I am a liar. His dream is just to pick this, peek this angle, and uh, die, apparently. No, I I'm sure he was hoping to get the kill there. Go back into T-spawn, save that weapon, save some more money potentially, but it just didn't happen. Here we go, though. We're once again at the point where Arctic Ace is one round away from equalizing the scoreline. The question is, are they going to fumble here before equalizing, or are they going to be able to do it? Coolcoms just sees every single Numa player in his scope, and he doesn't know who to aim at, but he is able to secure a lot of damage off onto Delete. And it's extremely aggressive here. Numa has changed the pace entirely. They are already pushed up into apartments. Cyandor does hear the damage go off. He gets traded out, though, after taking out Secret Agent. And now Arctic Ace should be aware that the entirety of the Numa team is inside of apartment slash boiler. And the rotate's gonna happen. Here it is, here's the rotate from Numa. Out into mid, they're gonna push up probably, I'd say, two players going boiler lane, one player going over towards... Oh no, they're, they're just gonna push straight through. Bricks, there's no way you didn't hear that. Bricks! Bricks is able to secure the pick. Coolcom's uh, also got one there. He is able to get a second one, and it is just MJ remaining over the shoulder of Mick. The bullet flies straight into MJ. And that is going to be Arctic Ace equalizing the scoreline on round 14 here as we move into round 15. This could be anybody's game. But we definitely, definitely love to see a close match here. Numa coming into this. They are half bought here. Galils and Mac 10s and one tech nine. MJ really, really out of cash. Valens is just gonna push right up through the smoke. And it's not gonna work out for him. Anti is there to get two picks. I mean, if he just sprays through this smoke, that's gonna be Gonak dead. Either way, MJ's down. Anti is almost able to reload his weapon and continue to fire, but uh, Gonak is able to trade him up with the Mac 10. But three players in three players taken out on the Numa side, and only one being taken out on Anti. It's not a very good trade situation. That firebomb might have actually been able to take out uh, Gonak there, but there it is, Mick. Securing the headshot onto Gonak, and it is Secret Agent all alone. Their secret is revealed. The Arctic Ace team should know that he is on the site. The question is, do they know that? I mean, Cyandor here, he's, he's watching mid, so I'm going to say that they don't know. If Secret Agent plays this well enough, he might be able to just sit on site while the Arctic Ace team rotates. But Coolcoms, he's watching it like a hawk, looking coffins, looking back to sight. Oh, this, pe this peak is not going to be worth it. This peak is absolutely going to be worth it. I lied. Mick and Cyandor, I mean... Oh, no. Secret Agent with the clutch. It's not. Cyandor is able to secure it and... Uh, Secure Arctic Ace a one round lead as we go into the second half, but before we go into the second half here, I'll take a little minute to tell you all about something. And that something is Headshot Energy. Oh, I know you want to hear about Headshot Energy. Headshot Energy is an energy formula like no other. It offers extreme mental focus, clarity, and mood enhancement, resulting in increased productivity and creativity. It provides your daily vitamins and immune support to keep you on top of your game with less downtime. Headshot is unquestionably the ultimate energy formula without the crash, leading you to experience a feeling like you've never felt before. Let Headshot bring out your true potential. Available in three flavors. Blue Raz, Green Apple, 
and orange mango, and you can get 10% off your headshot order and support the Arctic Ace team by using code Arctic Ace at checkout. All right, everybody, second round is going to begin. And we are going to go back into it as the match goes live. Eight to seven, Arctic Ace with a one round lead as we go into the second half here on Inferno. Round one begins. It's the pistol round. Arctic Ace now on the T side. Numa on the CT side. And we're going to see if uh, Numa plays uh, an excellent CT here. And if there is a reason Arctic Ace chose to be on the CT side first. Mick's going to be the first one to make contact here. Secret Agent as well. But there it is. Cool comes. Able to get the pick on Gonak inside of apartments slash balcony. And just like that, everything calms down again. The executes coming out. Some utility going out from the Arctic Ace side of things as they uh, smoke off Arch side lane. And they push through into Arch side lane. Oh my goodness. Mick playing uh, boiler lane and Ancy playing out of apartments. Valence is able to get the drop on two of the Arctic Ace players though. And it's just Ancy remaining playing in pit. Secret Agent at 8 HP. MJ and Valence both know he's there. And there it is, Numa, Secret Agent, able to get the headshot onto Anti. A very, very hectic first round here. It looked like Arctic Ace had that in the bag for a moment, but that flank maneuver from the Numa side of things just absolutely wrecked them. And the scoreline is once again equalized. All right, let's take a look at how they're playing this, though. The Numa side of things looks like they're playing three players pushing down mid very aggressively. Let's see if this aggression pays off. The trades come out. Players are still equal here. Gonak taken down to 36 HP, and it does look like another pick was secured. Oh my goodness, from Mexico. It's Bricks popping his little head out only to be face-to-face -face with Gonak's MP9. And that's going to be a two-round lead from Numa there. Uh, no, sorry, a one-round lead from Numa. I can't do simple math. Listen, kids, if, uh, if there's any kids even watching this, got to stay in school. Or else you might not be able to know that uh, 8 plus 1 equals 9 and not 10. But all the bad math aside, it looks like Arctic Ace is able to afford their AKs this round. I mean... The aggression definitely paid off for Numa last round, but they're not gonna they're not gonna be playing that aggressive. They know that Arctic Ace has full buys now. Oh, but oh, this is interesting. This is an interesting play. One play oh, two players stacked up an apartment and getting that crossfire angle. That's uh that's very nice from the Numa side of things. I mean, it is an equal trade though, one player for one player, but there it is. Cool comes able to take out Secret Agent. It looks like uh Arctic Ace is going to try for A site instead of going towards B. That's not going to work out in their favor, potentially, depending on how this goes here. I mean, Delete is able to delete bricks. Very unfortunate. He won't be scrubbing any more bricks to in this round, at least. Sandor, though, able to jump up onto the uh, apartment B side balcony above Pit and get that pick but let's see what it, where it goes from here uh mj pushing in through library taking a look at site here that's a nice firebomb a nice molotov and cool comms is able to kill the two remaining players on the numa side we love to see it the score line has been equalized once again nine to nine arctic ace versus numa on inferno Let's take a look at the scoreline here for a moment. Highest kills on Arctic Ace side. It's tied between Anti and Mick, both with 17. Over towards Numa. I mean, 15 kills on Gonak, a very respectable number. We love to see it. So the Arctic Ace is... Arctic Ace is, uh, it seems like, trying to bait out the aggression. I think they know that... Uh, Numa is on a half-buy here for the most part. I mean, two M4s, a FAMAS, 
a swag seven. Gotta love the swag seven. Let's take a look at delete. What is what is he doing with this swag seven? Actually, never mind. Let's get back to the action. I mean, Valens goes down. Mick to take him out. <coughs> oh no! I hope I hope I don't have the big virus. All right, everything's slowed down once again. That one prick from Valens seems to be not enough to bait out Arctic Ace's aggression at the very least. The players are stacked up pretty much everywhere. Secret Agent's going to pop a little flash here. Anti, I mean, he's pushing that Swag 7 danger close. Yes, he is able to get to delete down 4 HP with that... Uh, light toss of a frag grenade. Scrub Bricks able to get Gonak with a headshot on site, and it's looking like it's going to be an A plant here with one player remaining in banana to potentially catch anyone that's rotating through mid and that is exactly what's going to happen here secret agent is tempted to do it but what is secret agent gonna do we take a look at Brick's perspective, MJ and Secret Agent both going towards B site. They're going to try and save it, but oh my goodness, the whole Arctic Ace squad is pushing in on them. For whatever, what reason could they ever want to do that? I don't know, but Secret Agent is able to kill Cyandor. Anti, he was the doubled up player, and Arctic Ace is able to secure a round victory here. And that's going to do a lot of damage to Numa's economy. I know what Arctic Ace was going for there, th damaging the economy. Trying to cause an economic crash on Anuma's side. Nano in the chat saying, let's go Arctic Ace. You love to see the support from the CEO of the team. This man loves his team. He loves his Counter-Strike players and his Valorant players. There we go. Cool comms though. Down to 42 HP off a of frag grenade. Some good utility damage coming out from Numa's players here. But Cool Combs is able to get a pick. Able to get two picks. Mick able to get one as well on delete. And it's looking like Valens and MJ are going to have to go against five players here. Or save their weapons. I'm not even sure. Well, they're obviously not going to save. They only have pistols. Chili, what are you talking about? Cheeky little frag grenade from Mick. It doesn't do anything, but it's definitely worth the shot, especially if you suspect they're going to be playing these tight angles. MJ, oh, they heard that. They heard that for sure. I love that you can hear when fire does damage to an opponent in this game. It really makes things interesting, because you can have your position given away just by unfortunate footsteps into fire. Let's take a look over at the last remaining player on Numa's side of things, though. It's Valens playing with the stat track USP. Orion, I wish I could inspect it. Hey, there we go. Big follow from Maxon. Love to see it. Thank you very much, Maxon. As we take a look at Valens here, Valens is able to get the pick on Sandor, secure a weapon, and that's going to be a very good save. Oh, unfortunately for Valens. Two players uh, were alerted of his position and were able to push up and take him out. Arctic Ace sitting at 11 rounds. They are at a two-round lead here against Numa on Inferno. And we're just going to have to see if Team Numa has what it takes to equalize it once again as we... Uh, Get back into the action here on round six of the second half. <laughs> Nano saying they weren't letting him keep that gun. Oh, they absolutely were not. Two swag sevens on the Numa side, though. USB, Deagle, and I believe a 5.7. I am so bad at recognizing if it's a 5.7 or the other little pinky pistol. Gonak is able to get the kill on uh, Coolcoms, and this is an all-around unfortunate round for arctic ace except it's been turned around already anti an absolute demon popping out of apartments and just slaying numa players as he does it and i think this might be the first time i actually lose my voice after a cast oh no I 
defended by Siles, a Cyandorf, and Scrub Bricks goes down! Valens uh, was taken out by the Molotov, and Cyandor is able to uh, finish it up. Good to see a Cyandor fan raid as that happened. Let's go, indeed. But if we have any Numa fans, we'd love to see you. Let's uh, let's hear you guys cheer for your team here. Come on. You gotta support your team if you're a fan of Numa. Match has been paused. It could be a tech. It could be a strategy. It might be a tech, though. The timer is not ticking down. <laughs> they all have a pneumonia. <laughs> You're funny, Nano. You make me laugh. <coughs> oh god, I have a cold. I've caught the pneumonia. Yeah, it seems like it might have been a tech, uh... Tech time. Uh, I can't remember what Budfly told me. I think techs go to five minutes. Yeah, so it may just have been a strategy one. But either way... Both teams are able to afford full buyouts here, and it looks like Valence is going to be going with the AUG. Oh, was it? Oh, it might have been a tech. Secret Agent doesn't look like they're connected at the moment. I'm not sure why the round continued, if that's the case. Very strange. Nope, Secret Agent's back. Okay. A lot of uh, utility damage going off on the Arctic Ace side of things, though. Uh... Auto ACTV saying 10-12. Yeah, let's go. You believe. You believe in Numa. We love to see you believing in Numa here. As the shots go out, Polcoms is able to secure one. He's able to secure another. A 3v3 situation it is, and that was almost some friendly fire. A very dangerous op shot from Polcoms here. And it is still a winnable round for sure, if Auto ACTV is correct. Bricks is able to secure the headshot onto Secret Agent. Very unfortunate for Secret Agent. And it looks like it is going to be a save here from the uh, Numa side of things. The smart decision to make, of course. I mean, you want to keep those weapons, especially... You don't, you don't want to let the other team run away with the lead here. Or run away with the lead and also run away with your economy, I should say. Terrorists win. So Delete and Gonak are going to be keeping their M4A1Ss. And it looks like uh, still full buys from the Arctic Ace side of things. And that's what I'm saying, Auto ACTV. I want to see. I want to see a real close match down to the wire. But maybe I'm just getting too excited. It has been a very close match thus far, though. And uh, you love to see it. Numa definitely deserves their spot in the advanced league here. As we get into round eight of the second half on Inferno Arctic Ace versus Numa. And it looks like things have slowed down. That's a first pick from Gonak. Anti able to secure the trade, though. Gonak is able to get two picks. That's two picks coming out of Gonak. Uh, Mick and Coolcoms are down for the count. Gonak is traded off by Bricks. 3v3. Things are still equal. Never mind. Delete is just deleting players left and right. It's Bricks and Anti to go down. Sandor is the final player remaining. He knows there's one pit, but he can't do anything about it because the rest of Numa is pushing onto site. And it looks like this is going to be Numa's round right there. And there it is. Numa into the double digits now. Still at a three-round deficit. But they are getting closer to Arctic Ace here as we're getting into the final stages of the match. You love to see it. Taking a look at the scoreline here. Highest kills on the Arctic Ace side of things is Anti with 22. And... Numa with Gonak with a clean 18. Respectable numbers once again at this level of play. A 
All's quiet. Bomb has been dropped into the default position to be picked up later on once it is determined what site they're going to be going to. That's a smoke out towards A. Anti is pushing up very aggressively in apartments here. It's a Molotov down on Boiler. Boiler. That's a very nice Molly pushing MJ out of their uh, out of their boosted position, and it looks like three of the Numa players have already rotated over towards B with another sneaking their way towards Library. But uh, Secret Agent's not going to rotate just yet. The flash comes out, Valence goes down. Gonak able to get the trade though, and then falling back into Coffin slash Construction. And MJ's gonna get this pick on bricks right here. There it is. See that? I called that. I knew. Some a little tiny bit of uh, grenade damage, utility damage, I should say, from uh, Nancy there. And Mick, I mean, goodness gracious, Mickey Mick, getting two picks. Nancy getting one. And it's going to be Cyan, or the final player remaining on the Arctic Ace side of things to secure the victory. Putting Arctic Ace at 14 rounds. Numa sitting down at 10. The match is definitely leaning toward Arctic Ace at this point in time, but I've seen teams come back from worse than this, and I believe Numa might, may have what it takes. Oh, very nice scout shot onto Coolcoms. It wasn't able to finish him off, but that definitely, uh, that definitely scared him. Definitely put the fear of God into Coolcoms. But look at this. Completely different how Arctic Ace was playing. The oh no, Mick! You've been spotted, but Coolcoms is watching your back. He might be able to get the shot off before you get killed. Oh no, I, I was watching an <laughs> I was watching an Arctic Ace player. I thought that was a CT jumping out of apartments right behind Mick. I was so concerned. I feared for his life. Everything's slow. It's so close. Anti getting ready to make the push out of apartments. And he's not able to take out Delete. Delete is a little bit faster with the trigger finger. But the Arc Ace push comes out very fast. Very aggressive. Players are dropping left and right. It is absolute chaos in Inferno. Nice Molotov to push MJ out of their position. That's going to disorient them enough for Bricks to get the pick. And it all comes down to Valens here. This is a very important round for Numa. They need this round to basically be able to afford any weapons. I mean, even if they... Oh my... Yeah, the AWP. Okay. I thought, I thought Valens gave up for a second. But no, it's just a save. Save that up. It's going to be Arctic Ace at 15 rounds, though. That makes it match point. Match point. Arctic Ace looking, uh, looking pretty good right now. The economy on uh, Numa is not too terrible. I mean, it is match point, so the smart decision, just buy up anything you can, and that's exactly what they're going to do. I mean... Gonak having to settle for an MP9, same with Valens, but it might not be settling in their case. I've seen them get a few picks off with those weapons. A few nasty picks. 
There we have it, Gonak pushing aggressively down Banana, and you love to see it. He's able to get the pick off on Mick. We're gonna go take a look at Gonak's perspective here. He was able to secure the AK-47. That is huge. That already gives him a player advantage, and it really equalizes the weapon advantage here. We're gonna go take a look at Qualcomm since he's taking those blind shots through the smoke. I th that could have been a wall bang, but it wasn't. Oh, he hit the... Yeah, never mind. You can't shoot through bricks in this game. What am I talking about? All right, first point of contact is going to be Bricks, though. Bricks checking the corner. Very smart decision. Cool comms over the shoulder, able to get the shot off on Gonak. Three players remaining on the Numa side of things. As we take a look here, who the first point of contact from Numa is going to be? It's going to be MJ, I believe. MJ closely followed by Secret Agent. And Delete. We want to get Secret Agent's POV here. Coolcom's able to trade him up, and it all comes down to delete a 1v3 situation on match point. Is he going to be able to secure it? He is able to get the damage off on Coolcom's, but there it is, a wall bang from Cyandor to finish it up. Arctic Ace taking the victory. Yeah, no problem, Yezda. I, I was a pleasure to have you all here with me. We're actually going to have an interview with uh, Scrub Bricks, one of the Arctic Ace players. In fact, he is the uh, IGL in-game leader for the team, and he is, I believe, here because I just heard a really loud clap. <laughs> How yeah. are you doing? Hi, yeah, I'm not doing too bad. How are you doing? How are you feeling after that match? I uh, won't lie. Uh, kind of kind of sloppy on our part. Um, we had a lot of good ideas but the actual execution of them was uh a little poor from us today won't lie so okay yeah no i i mean it was very close uh in the match so if, if you're saying that's a sloppy for performance on your part uh on your guys's part then you're saying you definitely could have played that match better uh I, at least in my opinion yeah uh there's a couple calm issues we had and whatnot kind of broke down in some rounds um but once we kind of got stuff going on t side there was really no stopping us to be honest so yeah, well, and you could definitely tell that there, uh, I believe it was towards the point when they were still down at, uh, Numa was still down at nine rounds one, and you guys sort of just started taking a lead on them, and it just carried on from there. I think they were, yeah, we, yeah. yeah, we ended up uh, breaking their money there, and that kind of, we were kind of able to uh, snowball off that and whatnot, so that, that helped us finish up the game on our T side. Which honestly was a pr pretty good T-side from us in general. I was pretty happy with how we played that T-side. Yeah, no, it, it was impressive. I mean, there were a lot of... Can I say something, though, Bricks? Yeah, of course. There, there were a lot of close calls with, with Coolcoms just aiming right over the shoulder of you in particular. Hey, uh, that, that's, that's how me and Connor play. We go back to back, going okay. back to... Uh, you know, he's, he's the homie, he's the EU import, you know? We got that. Uh, we got that good chemistry going between us. Won't lie. So, oh, good. To, I mean, good to know you don't mind his bullets flying directly uh, over no. your shoulder. All right. Awesome. I, I'm used to a TK or two by now, so I deserve it anyway. <laughs> uh, I hope it doesn't happen. To be honest, I hope there's no TKs in the coming matches. Uh, your guys' next match actually is going to be against uh, Resurgence Esports. Do you have any? Do you have any info on Resurgence? Any expectations about going into that net into that? Um, not a not a crazy amount right now. They've kind of just been middle of the pack advanced. Um, and obviously we're kind of looking to, you know, prove that you know we are a playoff contention team. And obviously with the new roster addition, we kind of got some work to do with that still. Um, but I mean, I'm I'm feeling confident against it. We should. Um, I'm content with saying that we should we should beat these guys. Um, and you know, hopefully when we play them Friday, it'll, it'll look like that will happen. So. Well, I'm I'm glad to hear it, and I'm looking forward to watching the matches, Bricks. You've got a lot of fans in the chat right now, by the way. I don't know <laughs> if you know that. I did not, but I don't have the chat pulled up. But shout, shout out to all the homies. Thank you very much for the support and whatnot. I appreciate it all. So. Yeah, and it was a pleasure talking to you, Bricks. Uh, we're going we're gonna to end the stream out here, though. We're going to end it off with a raid. Do you have anything you want to say before you go? Uh, oh, I guess you can hear my roommates, so I'll just say thank everybody for the support, and I will leave at that before it gets loud. <laughs> right on well it was a pleasure having you bricks uh and it was a pleasure having everyone here uh watching in the stream uh goodbye everybody we're gonna raid out to the main lion's den 
I believe I got the name right here, but before we do that, I'm just going to pop up a little word from So We Gaming. Once again, thank you, everybody. Attention gamers of all ages, there's a podcast you will want to add to your playlist. So We Gaming. So We Gaming was created for gamers by gamers. This podcast explores many topics from gaming entertainment, food, current events, and much, much more. They enjoy bringing on guests to learn about them. They discuss their favorite games, their passions, as well as helping to promote their brand. So We Gaming is available on Spotify, Apple Podcast, your favorite podcast player, and So We Gaming. Gaming.com. Add Zoe Gaming to your playlist right now.